recording. Hey everyone, as promised, I said I would do a review of the new firmware update for the Bebop 2's um, the rain stopped today, so I went and did a test flight, and it was um, it was good. What are the differences? I don't know. Um, the only thing that I did notice was the stabilization in the wind or hovering. Uh, prior to the update, uh, because I, I I like to fly in the mountains and it's all really windy up there, the attitude of the aircraft would usually bank or yaw to compensate for the wind direction uh, and it would do a lot of uh, very large adjustments when it's uh, trying to keep itself um, stabilized in the wind and today I also had wind surprisingly in la a piece of land um, just not too far from me I was looking for somewhere where I could test wind so that was that was a perfect spot so I put it up and it banked as well to compensate for the wind but I noticed a very slight difference where the adjustments were very micro uh, as opposed to before it would make really large adjustments and if it got hit by a gust what it would do instead of going all the way and trying to stay there I noticed that the craft now moves it goes like this and then comes back so like a very subtle motion I think uh, the update was to do with the the uh, sensory uh, uh, sort of the the sensors, the sensory input, and the corrective actions out of those to the craft. So I can see a very subtle uh, change in that, where it um, doesn't do very rapid corrections. It would correct itself, but very micro. And then if it has to do a big correction, it would sort of sway a bit, but without tilting the drone like this really hard. But I would have to test it in really, really strong winds, like winds that you're not supposed to fly into, uh, to make a, a, a fair conclusion. As opposed to the previous versions. So, I mean, that's with the stabilization, hovering. Also, I notice, and you can also check this out, your hovering distance, if you hover your craft, and you notice the distance from the craft to the ground, uh, try to hover like one meter. Uh, I don't know how much that is in feet, but you can write the feet. So just hover one meter. Don't go too high because then it's going to use the barometer. I don't want that. Um, I want you to test the craft hovering lower than what the barometer comes in and starts using. So usually one meter, two meters is okay. And it's going to use the, um, the ultrasound. So visually gauge your craft's height and check on your controller if it's the same. Um, if it's visually correct with the reading. And I think that's something that also improved. So... Uh, going back to the sensory uh, algorithm and its corrective uh, actions. So apart from that, um, it, it seems to uh, just be the same as before. The follow me works uh, just as good as it did before. Uh, cameraman works. I did the cameraman first to see if the drone would turn and sort of um, look at me. And then I activated follow me mode and then I piloted the drone away from me and then just had to do an orbit and then had it follow me while I walked around. So follow me worked um, really well. Uh, it did work well prior to this update, so um, uh, no changes there. The magic dronies, the auto shots all worked the same. Um, it didn't fall out of the sky during those actuations. I did test all of those because I make those um, tutorial videos, so I need to <laughs> make sure that I'm not gonna lead anyone to crashing their craft. So um, the auto shots, the magic dronies, they all work fine with the follow me. That also works fine. And what else did I do? Uh, that's about it. I didn't do a range test because I don't fly out of um, line of sight or loss. Uh, I like to keep it within view. And if it does go like up to 200 meters, then I have my um, sort of, I have my, uh, 70 to 200 and I just sort of have it in video and follow the craft while it flies away and also I have a view of the surrounding to see if there's any uh, sort of paragliders or other drones or, or anything in the air. I, I'm sorry I couldn't do a range test because that's it's really not important to me. I have enough distance uh, for the drone to fly to be able to capture uh, beautiful images. Um, so yeah that, that was about it. The My overall conclusion on the firmware update is I do notice a bit of improvement in the way the drone corrects itself. Um, 
in flight. But would people notice that? I don't think so. Uh, it, it's very minuscule to um, just sort of like look at it and like, oh yes, yes, it's doing something different. But because I do quite a lot of flying with the Bebop and I really pay attention to its attitude because I make I, I like to make tutorials. So I, I pay quite a lot of attention to the attitude of the aircraft while it's flying. And uh, I can just sort of use my memory and, and see now uh, the slight differences. That is my overall conclusion. Uh, no, the firmware will not crash your drone. Um, other factors will crash your drone if your battery is unbalanced or um, you have a bad uh, PCM on the battery. Uh, that crushes your drone. Oh, also, um, in uh, what was it, 2016, uh, some hackers they uh, they could telnet into your Bebop and crash them. But um, Bebop's update after that uh, closed the open port on the telnet. They do have an open port on, on the FTP for your media, but I don't think anyone would go to that extent of hacking your drone and um, sending the emergency command to drop. If you look after your batteries, if you uh, do everything correctly um, and try to keep a safe environment for the LiPos, storage, I think your drone will not fall out of the sky. Yeah, that's it. Uh, if you have any comments, write them in the comment section. If you think I missed out anything with this update, please write them in the comments because other people would like to know as well. Until next time, fly safe, God bless.